everyone. Ready for a deep dive into something truly mind-bending? I hope so. Today we're going to be looking at how scientists are using light. Oh yeah, that's uh... To magnetize materials. Pretty wild stuff. Yeah, you heard that right. Yeah. Light, the stuff we usually think of for, well, seeing. Right, right. It's being used to create magnets. It sounds like something out of science fiction. It really does. But the thing is... Yeah. It's a real breakthrough. It is. With huge implications for pretty much everything. I mean, we're talking. Yeah, from how our electronics work to the future of computing. Exactly, the future of computing itself. Yeah. Okay, so let's unpack this a little. Yeah. I get how magnets work, you know, in the everyday world. Right. But how can light, something we think of as, you know, illumination, yeah. actually make something magnetic? It all comes down to these tiny little particles within atoms. Okay. Called electrons. Right. Electrons. And they spin. Okay. And that spinning is what gives them their own tiny magnetic field. Oh, that's interesting. What's fascinating is that we can now use specific wavelengths of light to actually flip the direction of these spins. Oh. Imagine a bunch of tiny compasses all pointing randomly. Okay. And suddenly a beam of light comes along mm. and makes them all align. Wow. That's essentially how light can induce magnetism. So we're talking about controlling magnetism at the atomic level here. That's exactly it. That's incredible. And our source material mentions that this happens incredibly quickly. Right. Like within 50 picoseconds. Yeah, that's uh, that's mind-bogglingly fast. I mean, is that even possible? 50 picoseconds is 0 0.00000000050 seconds. Wow. It's billions of times faster than your computer takes to boot up. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. And this speed is a game changer. Absolutely. Especially when you think about how slow and energy intensive our current electronics can be. Right. And this has got to have some major real world applications. Oh, absolutely. But first, what kind of light are we talking about here? Uh, well, Is this like shining a flashlight on something and... No, no, no. Boom, it's magnetic. Not quite that simple. Okay. Scientists are using different types of light okay. from visible light uh -huh. to terahertz radiation. Terahertz radiation, okay. And they each have different effects depending on the material they're interacting with. Interesting. One exciting area is the use of terahertz lasers. Okay. They're particularly interesting because they can create these incredibly strong magnetic fields uh -huh. without heating up the material they're aimed at. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. Why is the lack of heat so important? Well, because heat can actually disrupt the alignment oh, uh, of those electron spins we talked about, yeah. which essentially ruins the magnetic effect. Got it. Terahertz lasers provide a way to manipulate magnetism very precisely uh -huh. without that unwanted heat, Okay. allowing for much finer control. So no accidental meltdowns in the lab? Hopefully not, no. So what else makes these terahertz lasers so effective? Well, they can induce these changes in magnetism on an unbelievably fast time scale. Okay. Less than one picosecond in some cases. Wow. This <laughs> means we can control magnetism with phenomenal speed and precision. That's incredible. Yeah. So this isn't just some theoretical lab experiment. No. Yeah. This has some serious real world potential, right? Yeah. What kind of applications are we talking about? Oh, absolutely. One of the biggest is energy efficient memory. Oh, yeah. Imagine devices that use a fraction of the power they currently do. Right. And have incredibly fast processing speeds. Oh, wow. We're talking phones that charge in seconds. That'd be amazing. And last for days. Wow. Computers that boot up instantly. Oh, my God. All because we're not relying on traditional energy-hungry methods right. to control magnetism. That would be a game changer for sure. Yeah. Are we talking about a whole new type of memory chip then? Potentially, yes. Wow. Think of it this way. Okay. Current memory technology uses electrical currents to flip those tiny magnetic switches that store data. Right. And that uses a lot of energy. Oh. With light-induced magnetism, Okay. we could use quick pulses of light to write and read data instead. Oh, wow. Which would be significantly more efficient. So we could store more information yes. and access it way faster. Exactly. What else is on the horizon? Well, increasing storage density is another huge possibility. Okay. Because we're controlling magnetism at such a tiny scale. Right. We can potentially create much smaller memory units. Oh, wow. Meaning you can pack way more data into the same amount of space or even less. That's amazing. Say goodbye to bulky hard drives. Yeah. And hello 
to super slim devices with massive storage capacities. Right. And then there's non-volatile storage. Oh, yeah. Non-volatile storage? What is that? Think of it like a super robust hard drive. Okay. That never forgets anything. Okay. Even when the power is off. That sounds amazing. Yeah. And then there's quantum computing. Right. That's one of those terms that gets thrown around a lot. It does. But I'm still a bit fuzzy on what it actually means. It is a complex topic. Yeah. But the key takeaway is that quantum computers are incredibly powerful machines. Okay. That leverage the principles of quantum mechanics. Okay. To solve problems that are impossible for our current computers to handle. Wow. Things like developing new life-saving drugs. Okay. Designing entirely new materials. Right. Even revolutionizing artificial intelligence. Right. And controlling magnetism at the atomic level. Right is crucial for actually building these quantum computers. So by manipulating these electron spins with light, yeah, we can control the building blocks of quantum computers. Exactly. It's like we're using light to program a whole new kind of computer. Wow. That operates on a completely different set of rules. So interesting. And that's what makes it so powerful. Okay, so we've covered energy efficient electronics. Right data stored, and even touched on quantum computing, yeah, no. all thanks to manipulating magnetism with light. Uh -huh. But does this only work on materials that are already magnetic? That's one of the most exciting aspects of this. Oh, really? It can be used to make materials magnetic that aren't typically magnetic. Whoa. We can essentially create brand new magnetic materials with light. Oh, my gosh. Which opens up a whole new world of possibilities for materials, science, and engineering. That's incredible. We're not limited to what nature gives us anymore. That's so cool. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So we're manipulating the fundamental properties of matter with light. Yeah, you got it. What other possibilities are there? But we've only just begun to scratch the surface. Okay. There's a whole field called spintronics. Spintronics, okay. Which uses the spin of electrons, not just for magnetism, mm -hmm. but for information processing and storage as well. Oh, wow. Imagine ultra-fast low power electronics that are also incredibly durable. Okay. It's a whole new generation of devices waiting to be unlocked. Spintronics, light induced magnetism. Yeah. This is all so fascinating. Yeah, it is. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, right. let's take a moment to really process all of this. Yeah. When we come back, we'll delve deeper into the specific applications of this technology. Okay. And what it could mean for the future. Yeah, sounds good. All right, I've had a moment to catch my breath. Yeah. We've laid out some pretty incredible possibilities for this light-induced magnetism. Right. Everything from revolutionizing how our electronics work uh -huh. to unlocking the potential of quantum computing. Yeah, it's really exciting stuff. What I'm really curious about is how this will actually change our lives. Okay. Let's start with energy-efficient memory. Okay. What does that look like in practice? Well, picture this. You're rushing out the door. Okay. And your phone's at 2%. Uh-oh. No problem. Mm -hmm. You plug it in for just a few seconds. Okay. And boom, you've got enough charge for the whole day. Wow. That's the kind of future this technology could enable. That sounds amazing. Devices that use far less power. Right. Because we're not relying on those old energy-hungry methods to control magnetism. No more battery anxiety. Exactly. But how would that actually work? Well, would we be talking about a totally new kind of memory chip? Exactly, right now. Okay. Memory chips use electrical currents to flip those microscopic magnetic switches that store data. Right. Which is a relatively slow uh -huh. and power-hungry process. Okay. But with light-induced magnetism, we could use incredibly fast pulses of light to write and read that data. Oh, wow. It's like flipping a light switch <laughs> instead of cranking a heavy gear, right. much faster and more efficient. So are we talking about completely replacing the chips in our computers and phones? Potentially, yes. Wow. This technology could lead to the development of entirely new types of memory chips. Okay. That are specifically designed to take advantage of light-induced magnetism. Wow. Imagine these new chips seamlessly integrated into our devices. Okay. Making them significantly faster and more energy efficient. So faster, more efficient devices, what's not to love? Exactly. You also mentioned increased storage density. Right. Does that mean our devices could hold way more data without getting any bigger? Precisely because we're controlling magnetism at such a tiny scale. Right. We can potentially pack data much more tightly. Oh, okay. Imagine storing an entire library's worth of information. Wow. On a device the size of a postage stamp. That's incredible. This could completely transform how we store and access data. Right. From personal devices to massive data centers. 
It's incredible to think how much power we could fit into such small spaces. Yeah. You also touched on non-volatile storage. Right. Which sounds like a pretty big deal. It is. Is that like a hard drive that never forgets anything, even if the power goes out? That's a good way to think about it. Okay. Non-volatile storage means the data is retained even when there's no power. Okay. This is already possible with technologies like flash drives and SSDs. Right. But light-induced magnetism could make it even more reliable and robust. So it's like an upgrade. Yeah. Think about it. We're talking about data centers that are immune to power outages. Oh. Devices that never lose your work, even if you forget to save. That would be a lifesaver. Yeah, especially for me. Literally in some cases. Yeah, exactly. We've been focusing on the practical applications. Right. But earlier you mentioned quantum computing. Yeah. I'm still struggling to grasp how light-induced magnetism fits into that world. Well, it's the key to unlocking the potential of quantum computers. Okay. Imagine a computer that doesn't just process information in ones and zeros. Right. But in a way that harnesses the strange and powerful laws of quantum mechanics. Okay. That's what quantum computing is all about. Right. And it turns out that being able to control magnetism at the atomic level using light mm -hmm. is absolutely essential for building these incredibly powerful machines. So light isn't just controlling the data in these quantum computers. Mm. It's actually controlling the very building blocks of the computer itself. Exactly. We're talking about using light to manipulate those tiny electron spins. Right. Which act as the fundamental units of information in a quantum computer. Okay. By precisely controlling these spins with light, uh -huh. we can essentially program and run these mind-bogglingly powerful quantum algorithms. That's a lot to wrap your head around. It is. What kinds of problems could these quantum computers solve? Well, imagine developing life-saving drugs with pinpoint accuracy. Okay. Designing revolutionary new materials that are lighter and stronger than anything we have today. Right. Or creating artificial intelligence that can truly learn and adapt. Wow. Those are just a few of the potential applications. It sounds like quantum computing could revolutionize almost every aspect of our lives. It really could. But are there any potential downsides or challenges to this technology? Of course. It all seems almost too good to be true. No technology is without its challenges. Right. One of the biggest hurdles is figuring out how to scale up this technology. Okay. Right now, most of the research is happening in carefully controlled lab settings. Yeah, makes sense. We need to figure out how to mass produce these light-induced magnetic materials and devices so they can be integrated into real-world applications. So we need to take it out of the lab and into the factory. Exactly. What else? Control is another big one. Okay. While we've made huge progress in using light to manipulate magnetism. Right. There's still so much to learn. Mm -hmm. Think about tailoring a suit. Okay. We need to figure out exactly how to use light to achieve the precise magnetic properties we need. Okay. For specific applications. Right. It's a delicate and intricate process yeah. that requires a deep understanding of how different materials respond to different types of light. It sounds like a delicate dance between light and matter. It really is. But it's through these challenges that we push the boundaries of science and engineering, right? Absolutely. And speaking of pushing boundaries, okay. we've been focusing on the technological applications. Right. But what about the scientific implications? Yeah. Does this breakthrough tell us anything new about the universe or how it works? Absolutely. This research has opened up new avenues for exploring the fundamental nature of magnetism. Okay. And its interaction with light. Interesting. We're getting a deeper understanding of how these forces work at the atomic level, uh -huh. which could lead to brand new insights in fields like condensed matter physics and material science. Wow. It's like we've discovered a whole new set of tools uh -huh. to probe the inner workings of the universe. So this isn't just about building cool gadgets. No. It's about expanding our fundamental understanding of the universe itself. Exactly. It's incredible to think about. It is. But before my head explodes from all this mind-blowing information, yeah. let's take a break and let our listeners digest everything we've covered so far. Okay. We'll be right back to wrap up this fascinating deep dive into the world of light-induced magnetism. Sounds good. Welcome back, everyone. We've covered a lot of ground in our deep dive into light-induced magnetism. We have. From energy-efficient electronics to quantum computing. Right. It seems like this technology could revolutionize so much of our world. Yeah, it, it's truly remarkable how something that sounds like science fiction. It really does. Is becoming a scientific reality. It is. And the implications go way beyond just 
you know, faster gadgets yeah. or more powerful computers. For sure. We're talking about a fundamental shift okay. in how we interact with uh -huh. and control the very building blocks of matter. As we wrap up this deep dive, yeah. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the bigger picture here. Okay. What does this breakthrough tell us about the future of science and technology? I think it points to a future where the lines between different fields of science uh -huh. become increasingly blurred. Interesting. You know, th mm. this research isn't just about physics right. or material science. Okay. It's about the convergence of those fields. Right. With chemistry, yeah. engineering, okay. computer science, and more. Wow. It's in that intersection okay. where diverse minds come together with a shared goal mm. that will see the truly groundbreaking discoveries emerge. A symphony of scientific disciplines all working in harmony. I like that. That's a powerful image. Yeah. But with so many possibilities, right. it's hard to even imagine what the future holds. I know. If you had to make one prediction <laughs> about the future of light-induced magnetism, right. what would it be? That's a tough one. Yeah. But if I had to choose, okay. I'd say we're going to see a shift from simply understanding the universe mm -hmm. to actively shaping it at the atomic level. Wow. We're already seeing hints of this with light-induced magnetism. Right. But I think this is just the beginning. Okay. Imagine a world where we can design materials with specific properties on demand. Wow. Create devices that operate at the quantum level. Okay. Or even manipulate biological processes with light. Wow. The possibilities are truly limitless. It's both exhilarating and a little daunting. I agree. To think about the power we're unlocking. Yeah. And as we venture into this uncharted territory, mm. what's the most important thing for us to keep in mind? Curiosity. Curiosity, okay. Never lose that sense of wonder. Okay. And the drive to ask questions. I like that. The more we learn, uh -huh. the more we realize how much more there is to discover. Right. And it's that spirit of inquiry uh -huh. that will propel us forward into this exciting new era of science and technology. Well said. And to all our listeners out there, yes. stay curious, keep exploring, definitely, and never stop asking questions. That's right. Who knows what incredible breakthroughs are just around the corner? Exactly. Waiting to be unlocked by the power of light. And that's a wrap for this deep dive into the world of light-induced magnetism. Thanks for having me. Until next time, keep those minds engaged yeah. and those imaginations firing. Absolutely.